Hi guys, it's Middle Maniac back again, and uh, um, in this video is sort of another uh, horror themed video. Um, this is going to be my top 10 favorite horror films. Um, so with that, let's begin. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, there it is. No, oh, that's not it. Ah, yeah. Alright, number 10. Number 10 is Dead Silence. Uh, directed by James Wan, of course, who directed the uh, first Saw movie, and um, he directed all the movies from the Conjuring franchise. Um, yeah, this movie is it gets really looked over uh, because of the time period that this came out in. People were basically had a weird mindset that they didn't want um, the uh, uh, they didn't want James Wan to be known for anything else other than the Saw film. I don't know why. That just was a thing back then. I don't know. But, uh, um... So, for a while, people just sort of shunned a lot of stuff that he put out afterwards. Again, until The Conjuring... The first Conjuring film came out. Um, this just so happened to be one of the things that they shunned. Um, and, uh, actually, um... Uh, the the distribution of this film on DVD was actually halted quite quickly. Um, I don't know if people like sent out a petition to halt it, or or it was just that sales weren't doing that well, so they quit making the making the DVDs. Um, but yeah, it's just a really really great film. It has that signature James Wan twist ending that you don't see coming. Uh, really creepy. Oh, and I also have the un unrated version, so it has, so it has, it's not cut or anything, so it has some scenes that are really, really cool. Um, but yeah, just a really great uh, ghost story type horror film. I absolutely love uh, the ghost story type horror films. Um, this is one of the best in my opinion. Um, it has a really, really great villain with a uh, Mary Chaw. Um. But yeah, awesome film. It's at number 10. Alright, at number 9... Hold on, let me just set this up here for a second. At number 9 is going to be... Uh, there we go. At number 9 is Creature from the Black Lagoon from 1954. Um, yeah, just it's the last uh, movie in the classic Universal Monster movie um, line. Um, this, uh, came out when, like, the, uh, a lot of the, uh, horror, element, horror movies switched over from being classic, ho uh, mythological horror stuff, like vampires, werewolves, mummies, and stuff like that, it switched over to, uh, the more scientific horror movies that would, uh, be throughout the, um, uh, 50s, and even, and kind of like the early 60s as well, um, but yeah, just a really, really good film. I'd say it's one of the most underrated of the uh, uh, Universal Monster films, um, along with, say, like, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and maybe um, the uh, Invisible Man. Um, but yeah, just a really good film. Um, I'd say... Eh, I don't know. I This might have been the first of the Universal Monster movies that I ever saw. It may, have been, it may have been the Dracula film. I don't quite remember. Um, but yeah, just a really good film overall. Really great effects. Um, probably one of the best cinemato cinematography um, for, um, I'd say, probably for uh, the entirety of the franchise. I mean, other than like The Mummy and Frankenstein, this is definitely one of the better in terms of cinemato cinematography. Um, just a really, really classic horror film. Yeah, that, that's at number nine. Uh, number eight is... Number eight is Poltergeist 2, The Other Side. Um, ju it's, a, it's just as good as the first Poltergeist film, if not slightly better. Um, this does introduce the villain of the, fr of the uh, uh, original franchise. Um, of course, the ghost of Reverend Kane, uh, the... Uh, sort of, uh, crazy, almost cult leader type guy, um, 
But yeah, just a really great horror film. One of my favorite horror sequels of all time. Uh, just an absolutely perfect film. Um, in my opinion, the last good Poltergeist film. 3 was okay, and then the remake was horrible, and then the sequel to the remake was even worse. Um, but yeah, Poltergeist 2, The Other Side, great horror film. That's at number... Uh, yeah, this is at number 8. Um, at number 7 is... Eh, there it is. Okay. At number 7 is The Howling from 1981. My all-time favorite uh, werewolf horror film. Um, this is the uh, Scream Factory version. So it uh, has like a ton of special features. I always love special features on horror films. Um, and yeah, especially on horror films, because like there's a lot of stuff that, uh, um, for a lot of movies, especially in the mid to late 80s, a lot of stuff that was cut out, like a lot of deleted scenes and stuff um, that are, um, that you, that a lot of people really wanted to see, but only got to see with, like, releases like this, um, but yeah, just a really great horror film, um, and yes, this does have the, uh, uh, uh original cover art in the back if you want to flip the, uh, uh, um, the, uh, paper, the paper cover thingy, um, but honestly, I don't think the original cover art's that that impressive, to be honest. I mean, not saying it's bad, it's not that impressive. Um, I'd say I actually like this version better. Um, just looks a lot neat, a lot cooler. Um, and the colorings just, it just pops, like the colors pop, like the oranges, uh, with the, um, blacks and blues in the background. Um, but yeah, just a really fantastic, fantastic horror film. Um, the werewolf effects are are some of the best werewolf effects you'll see in any horror film. Uh, hold on, this thing doesn't always close properly. Uh, and that should do it. But yeah, that's that number. What am I at now? Seven. <laughs> Ten, nine, eight, seven. Yeah, I'm at seven. Sorry, I completely lost track. I got so into talking about this film that I kind of lost track. Anyway, but yeah, that's at number seven. Alright, at number six is... There we go. At number six is John Carpenter's The Thing. Um, yes. This is this is one of my all-time favorite John Carpenter films. I'd say it's probably my second favorite. Um, this is a, also a Scream Factory release. So it has a ton of special features. I always like to get Scream Factory... I always like to get horror movies and, like, make sure... Like, try to... Uh, get a Scream Factory Blu-ray release if possible, because like Scream Factory has some of the best like they put some of the, like they put some of the best releases because they have like they always put just a ton of special features on there. Um, but yeah, I mean, what can be said that hasn't said been said before about this film? An absolute '80s classic. Um, it, it's just a perfect film, and I love the theme of, uh, uh, isolation causing, um, uh, distrust and paranoia. Great, great film. Great creature effects by Rob Botain. Uh, in my opinion, the best creature effects artist of all time. Uh, just an absolute mastermind behind the, uh, effects. <laughs> um, but yeah, just, I love it. And then, I does this have the original artwork? Um, yes, it does. It does have the original artwork. Which, is, I think it's... I think both are great. I like this one, and I also like the original one. I think the original one is more iconic. But this, but the one that's on the front here is a little bit more... Uh, no, it, I think it... This one, even though the original one's a bit more iconic, I think this artwork up front fits a little bit better of the tone of the film. In terms of the uh, freezing, freezing uh, Arctic tundra, and then the isolation, just a really great film. But yeah, that's at number six. I think I'm at. Yeah, I'm at number six. All right. Number five. Let me get this out really quick. Ugh. Sorry, I have the I have to get out the uh, box set of the Friday Thirteenth films for this one. Um, at number. 
five. Yeah, number five. And number five is Friday the Thirteenth, uh, Part Four, the final chapter. In my opinion, the best of the Friday the Thirteenth films, and uh, it's just perfect. Like, there's only a f like maybe like three or four perfect Friday movies, and then this is definitely the pinnacle of the franchise, in my opinion. Um, just a really great horror film. Tommy Jarvis is one of my favorite characters in a horror film in terms of the uh, protagonist. Um, and then Jason is just awesome. Not my favorite version of Jason. I'd say my favorite version of Jason is from Part 7, uh, when Kane Hodder played him for the first time. But it's still, it's still a really, just a really great Jason in this film. Um, the creature effects are great. Like, the makeup for Jason and just everything about it is just really, really good. But yeah. Uh, Friday the 13th, uh, Friday the 13th, Part 4, the final chapter. Is at number five. There. All right. Put this box back over here. All right. At number four is. Oh, here we go. At number four is Bram Stoker's Dracula, the best, uh, the best uh, Dracula film in my opinion. It's just, it's definitely the closest to the actual novel that anyone has ever gotten in terms of trying to make a film from it. Um, yeah, they added, yeah, uh, Francis Ford Coppola added some of his own twists and turns in here, but for the most part, it is very, very, very faithful to the novel. Um, one of the main, one of the uh, noticeable things that a lot of uh, other Dracula films leave out is, uh, um, uh, what was it, the uh, uh, scene where uh, um, Nina goes back to the castle, uh, Dracula's castle near the end of the film, uh, with Van Helsing, uh, and then the, uh, she, uh, is already bitten by Dracula, so she's t slowly turning into a vampire, but, like, to protect her, I guess, in a way, I, uh, to protect her from, like, the, uh, I guess, mind manipulation, Van Helsing, uh, uh, presses a holy wafer against her head, and it's just, in her face starts fizzing up and stuff like that, uh, that's something that a lot of, uh, little detail from the book that a lot of a film adaptation adaptations leaves out. Sorry, I am not doing well with my words today. I'm so sorry about that. But yeah, just some some of the little things that the book has, some little details that the book has, this film has, and that a lot of other films, Dracula films, don't have. Um, and then of course, this film has my favorite favorite movie score of all time. The orchestral operatic nature of it is just. I mean, to die for. Like, it's just such a good movie score. Um, but yeah, this is at number four. Alright, at number three is... Mm, at number three is The Fog by John Carpenter. My favorite John Carpenter film. And a, and a somewhat underrated one. Not extremely, but somewhat underrated. Um... I mean, John Carpenter himself is not too proud of this film. I don't understand why. It's a great film. Um, but I kind of understand in the sense that uh, you're your own critic in terms of your, uh, like, your, how's the saying go? If you make something, you're your own critic of it. Like, you're very critical of your own um, creations. So I guess that's something that, that could be why he's so he doesn't like it that much. Like, he's, like, again, you, if you create something, whether it be a song or, or a movie or whatever, you are your own critic. Like, you are probably the most critical about it than anyone. Um, so I guess that's it's kind of an, uh, an explanation why I'm, I'm sorry, I'm stuttering today. I'm, <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, this is just my favorite, uh, ghost story type horror film. Uh, it does that, like, to a T, like, I mean, and then the, uh, ghosts themselves, like, uh, the ghosts that are, look more, and more, look in, uh, are more like zombies than ghosts, um, but, uh, I mean, people say, people argue whether their ghosts are just zombies, um, I say they, they're ghosts considering that, the, uh, they can control the fog, uh, zombies can't do that, they don't have powers, um, I'd say, they're like the rare type of ghosts that come along once in a while that are able to take physical form or well not that 
No, they don't really take physical form. They just possess their own dead bodies. And so I guess they don't really take physical form. They just possess uh, or an already existing form, which was once already theirs. So, I don't know. You could call them zombies. You could call them ghosts, whatever. I call them ghosts. Um, but yeah, just an, a really good film. Um, one of my favorite movie scores of all time with the main theme. Um, but yeah, this is at number three. At number two, number two is the first Alien film from 1979. Um, I know a lot of people do prefer um, the second film, Aliens, and I do love that film. That's also a perfect film. Like, the first Alien and then Aliens, both perfect films, uh, but completely different from one another. The second one is more action sci-fi related. Like, uh, it has, like, maybe teeny bits of horror thrown in there, but it's more action sci-fi, whereas the first film is more sci-fi horror. Um, basically, um, basically a haunted house movie in space is what it's, like, sort of referred to. And, yeah, I mean, I prefer the more, the, a uh, little bit more horror-related uh, stuff, like, the horror-related aspect of it than the sci-fi, than the uh, action that the second movie has. Um... Again, even though I love the second movie, I prefer the more straight-up horror of the first film. Um, but yeah, and then, of course, H.R. Giger's design of the Xenomorph is one of the most iconic monster designs in all of cinema. Um, but uh, yeah, just a really, really perfect film. And then, of course, who, who could forget Sigourney Weaver as uh, Ellen Ripley, one of the best movie protagonists ever. Um... But yeah, uh, the original Alien is at number two. And at number one... Number one is the original Nightmare on Elm Street from 1984. Um, it's... Uh, compared to what to the movies in the, in the franchise that would come later on, like parts five, parts 5 and Freddy's Dead... This is one of the films of the early or the, uh, of the early films in the franchise that has aged very, very, very well. Um, yeah, it can be cheesy for people who like. Think there are people out there who say, "Oh, it's cheesy. Oh, look at it, it's old. It hasn't aged well." But a lot of those people are used to watching horror movies from I don't know at least the last ten years and aren't used to watching the older stuff from like the eighties and nineties and stuff like that. Um, but for the most part, for people who are used to, you know, older films, uh, uh, going back and watching it, then watching something newer, a newer horror film, it has aged quite well. Um, and of course, Robert England's performance as Freddy Krueger is top-notch, as always. Like, even in the really crappy movies later on, he still did a, he still did the best he could, you know? Um, but... Uh, just a really great film. Another really great uh, movie score. Love the main theme. Love the uh, sort of like uh, um, uh, um, chant. The one, two, Freddy's com coming for you. Uh, very creepy. Um, the design of Freddy is the best it's ever been. Um, and yeah, just a really perfect, perfect horror film. Uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street original film from 1984 is at number one. Um, so that's really about it for this video. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.